Hey guys, we are going to make some more Traveler's Notebook covers and this time we're going to use blue jeans. And now I've already cut the pattern pieces out of the blue jeans and I'll show you how I did that. First we need to change the color of the thread on the sewing machine. Uh, I have black in here and I want to change it to something that's more denim colored. And there is actually a thread color called denim that has varying shades of dark blue in it that you can buy at the fabric store. And my thread is caught on something. Oh, there we go. Um, I'll set the black aside over there. Anyway, it's called denim and it looks like this. So you might want to look at um, buying that. This, it's by Coats and Clarks. This is from Hobby Lobby. But most of the thread manufacturers um, have something that's denim, called denim or jeans or something. Put that in here. I don't think we're going to get too far with this bobbin because it doesn't have much thread on it, but we'll use it the way it is and we will see. For proper threading of your sewing machine, please be sure to check your owner's manual. Each sewing machine is a little bit different and you need to read, study, and understand your owner's manual in order to understand your machine. Get mine all threaded here. I have a jeans needle in, in my machine, so if you're going to do something like this, even if you're using um, um, canvas, like in the first Traveler's Notebook video, which I will link in the description below, along with another video I did a long time ago on sewing with denim, where I made my denim apron that I wear a lot in my art room. Um, they both have really great hints and tips in them, so I'll link them both below. Um, <clears throat> You want to make sure if you're using either the thick canvas or denim that you have a denim needle in here because it's a, a thicker, sharper needle and if you try to use anything else you're probably just going to break your needle. Alright, we'll get started in a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, I've already cut up my pattern pieces out of an old pair of my husband's blue jeans of which this is not, so we won't be cutting them, but I wanted to show you how I um, disassembled the pants to get them ready to have um, something made out of them. So when I get the old pair of jeans from my husband, the first thing I do is I cut both of the legs off um, right across here at the crotch. Um, then I take the top part of the pants and if I'm not making an apron, then I take the pockets off, which you can see that I did, and I also take out the little small, this is, these are, he usually, usually buys Levi's and they have not only the small pocket on the inside front pocket here, but it is a complete pocket, meaning that it doesn't run down off into the inside seam and it's really only like this much of a pocket. It's actually a complete pocket. So I usually take that whole pocket out and then I discard the rest of the top of the pants. If I'm making an apron out of it, as you will see in the apron video, if you watch the apron video, we actually use the whole back of the pants. Um, so then I only really disassemble the front and toss the front. When you're cutting your pieces out of the legs, the first thing I do is split the legs open to make them a flat piece of fabric. So I usually take the legs and split them. Well, it depends on what I'm making. Um, most of the time you don't want to sew over um, this welted seam. So this has um, got lots of thickness of fabric in it already and if you fold it over and try to sew over it even with a denim needle you're going to have trouble. So when you're making other things out of an old pair of blue jeans you want to work around or work with this fabric, uh, this seam as it is in a single layer or work around it and not use it at all. So if I'm making something like we're making today where I'm making a notebook cover or a bag out of the jeans then I usually split the leg up along this seam and open it up flat and then on the other then after I've done that then I cut the seam off and then I have a nice flat piece of fabric and it will have a seam in it but it's a regular seam and it's not as thick and bulky and it's easier to sew over alright put those down back here and we've got all our pieces ready to go and I do have a bunch of pieces for pockets I have the two back pockets from the pants 
and that one inside pocket. So these are nice and I do want to trim the pockets up a little bit because you don't want to, if you're going to use them on your on your notebook, this is too much fat, extra fabric. You want to leave about a half an inch all the way around the edge if you can. Use a nice sharp pair of fabric scissors. I'm not going to quite get a half an inch down here at the bottom of this, but that's fine. I'm going to cut it as big as I can. As long as it's straight and even. Now because this little pocket was part of the inside pants pocket, it's got this piece of lining in it. See, we don't need that, so we can just cut that off without cutting through the denim. I'm just going to... And it's also um, riveted here, right, because they're Levi's. They rivet uh, all the seams. So I want to pull this and just kind of snip the fabric so that we have a little piece here, but I've taken away most of the bulk of that extra fabric that we don't need. We have a cute little pocket we can use on our co on our notebook. The, with the big pockets, you basically do the same thing. I have plenty of fabric around these, so I can leave about a half an inch. And again, if you're making an apron, then follow the directions in that video, which are a little bit different. You, of course, can make an apron and add extra pockets to it if you have more than one pair of blue jeans. I've done that a few times for customers. Okay. One more. Now if you don't want the brand name tag on the um, jeans and it's sticking out of the pocket right here, then you can cut that off. I don't mind it, so I'm going to leave it. Alright, now we've got all our pieces ready to go. So we're going to make kind of piles. I'm going to put my pockets here. I've got my front and back pieces here. I've got my pieces for the inside pockets here. So we're going to start doing our basic assembly. I need to get some labels out and I need to figure out kind of where I'm going to put these these little pockets and the big pockets and I'll be right back. Okay, I got all my stuff together. I think maybe <laughs> let's move the machine a little closer to me but angle it still so you guys can see. And I think I'm going to try to work with the pockets on the inside of the um, notebooks. I think that would be fun that way. So let's see, the first thing I'm going to do is take four of my larger strips and we are going to at about a presser foot's width or a little bit more away from the cut edge of the fabric um, we are going to um, sew a stitching line. Now this is um, even though this is denim it does have a wrong side and a right side so make sure when needed when we're doing the assembly or you're doing your assembly that you have the right side of the fabric up or you know that it's facing the correct way. I'll show you, I'll explain more what I mean in a minute. Um, we just want a straight stitch so make sure your stitch width which is how far the needle moves this way and that way yeah should be at zero. The stitch length which is how long your stitches are should be medium to small so I'm gonna set mine at about three. to go back and forth a couple forth a couple times in the beginning back and forth back and forth all right and we're not gonna we're gonna do sort of assembly line fashion because I am making more than one of these and they will be for sale in my Etsy shop do 
do four of them, so one more. I'm sewing this with the right side facing up. Oops. That's a little far away from the edge, but it's okay, it won't matter. All right. This is just to prevent it from fraying too much. Basically, cut all of our threads, cut our pieces apart. There we go. Now, so we have two, two, and two. All right. So I have them laying down here on the table, which you can't really see, but I have them laying down here on the table this way with the lines of stitching facing in, which is how they're going to be on the inside of the notebook cover. And then I'm going to cut some of these other pieces. We're going to do the one, cut one third of them off. Approximately, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, now I have to decide, I have to decide before we get too far what exactly I'm doing with these big pockets because they're the ones I'm not sure about. I kind of am wondering if I should put them on the outside, but then I'm going to have trouble if I do that putting the rivets through down the center. But I could put them on the outside and cut them in half. Or three quarters. That actually would work. All right. So I do think that I want to take, I have one of these small pockets, this here. And I'm thinking that I want to use that on the inside somewhere because I think that would be cute on the inside. And I could put my label like at the top. I like that idea and I'm only going to be able to do it on one. But each one of these is un unique and different so that's fine. Um, I So I don't need one of these pieces of denim fabric so I'm going to put that aside. We're going to do some stay stitching which is what this is called um, across the tops of all of our smaller pockets now. We're doing this in real time. I'm not fast forwarding or cutting a bunch of stuff out. If I if I stop the camera and you see, you know, the clip merge to another clip, it's because I've had to answer the phone or the computer or something. or stop and get something out of the closet because I forgot something. Because, <laughs> you know, my memory's got more holes than a pasta strainer. So. Okay. Let's stop at the end here. Clip all our threads. Okay, so now we need to put our labels, and on one short piece we're going to put a label, and I'm going to just take my label and I'm going to center it in the rectangle, and we're going to sew all the way around. Now on my machine, if I go too fast, my stitch length has a habit of migrating itself larger, the dial moves on its own, so I have to constantly come over here and check and make sure it's still on, th I want it to be on three or near three. That probably isn't going to be true with your machine, it's just one of the quirks of this machine. Okay, trim all these little threads off. 
And then I'm going to take one of my really big pieces. This is the one that the little small pocket is going to go on. And I'm going to center my label up here near the top. About an inch or so, inch and a half from the top. And we're going to sew it down. If you're doing these for sale, like if you're doing maybe an arts and crafts show or you're selling them in your Etsy shop, not only do you totally have my permission to use the pattern that way, but make sure you stick a label in it, for goodness sakes, so that people know who made it. Be proud of what you do. These little embroidered labels can be purchased um, through websites, lots of different websites out there that do them. All right. So now we can start assembling our pockets. Now I've got all my pieces ready. Um, so I can start putting my pockets together on my um, pieces of fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is sew the little pockets to the big pockets. Um, with this one, because we've got so much bulk of fabric, I want to make sure that it's closer to this edge than that edge and that it is up from the top bottom because I don't want to have um, uh, a problem sewing through. I don't want to hit this rivet when I sew the whole thing together. That would be a problem. So when you're sewing these salvaged pockets on from the jeans, you know, don't go too quickly. Go slow. If you hit some of that um, that seam, the double uh, double welted seam, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm rusty with the names of seam C because I don't sew that much anymore. Um, then make sure that you um, just have, a, you know, like I said, a nice sharp needle, and you're not going too fast. The big thing is don't hit this rivet because if you hit that metal, it can guarantee you you're going to break your needle. And we don't want that to happen. Make sure your fingers do not go underneath the presser fit. That's also bad. <laughs> Guess how I know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not once, twice, because really, I didn't learn the first time. <laughs> once was on the job, my boss came up and tapped me on the shoulder and scared the crap out of me. So there, that's going to be cute, right? I think that's going to be cute. All right, that's going to go on there. All right, so now we're going to do the rest of these. going to just again assembly line sew them. I'm going to make sure when you're assembling them that you've got your two right sides facing up towards you and that you don't have one of them looking like that. Yeah, You want them to be right sides, to right sides out, both right sides facing up. Now I tried really hard when I cut all these pieces out to avoid any seams if possible. I just didn't want the seams on there. You might feel differently about it, but like I said earlier, be careful about where you place the seam and how much how bulky it is. Um, it might make it difficult or impossible to sew through. And there's a million things you can make with a pair of blue jeans. I really do recommend the other video, um, the apron video. I used to make hot pads and table runners and all kinds of things out of just old blue jeans. And they always were um, 
um, good sellers both at the craft shop that I was at and when I did craft shows. <clears throat> so now we're going to just clip all our threads. I'm going to just dump them on the floor because I need to vacuum in here anyway so it doesn't matter. All right. Oops. I hit the camera. Sorry. All right. So now we can assemble all of our pockets on our side large pocket and we can sew them all down. Again, make sure that you have all your right sides facing up. You don't want to sew them this way. So, no, we don't want that. When you're working with any fabric that has a right side and a wrong side, you want to be aware of that and that you um, are taking precautions and you're assembling them in the correct way. Oh, see, we ran out of bobbin thread. Let's do that first. I knew that wouldn't last long. All right. <clears throat> so if there's any little bits of thread left on your bobbin when you run out of thread, just take it off. My bobbin um, threader is on the top here, so I'm going to put the bobbin on, make sure it's seated all the way down, and then I have to push it over. I have to release the wheel here on the end so that the needle does not move up and down. Pull my thread out, but there's a hook here it has to stay into. Then I'm going to wrap my thread around here a few times. And then I'm going to hold on to it. I like to give it some extra tension because I just feel like I get a nicer wind on my bobbin if I do. get a nicer even more evenly wound bobbin if I do that now we've got to rethread the machine got to tighten that wheel back up again Okay, now we're all ready to go. All right, I'm going to line the bottom up of these smaller pockets with the um, bottom edge of this inside flap. So we'll call it a flap. Okay. You can hear the machine start to get louder. Um, not only do I think my machine needs a little oiling and, and dusting, but it, uh, there's start, we're starting to get a lot of layers of denim here. I do think my machine might need some oiling. Every year or two, I take it into the sewing machine repair pl place, and I have them... Uh, whether it's running well or not, and I have them just give it a really super thorough cleaning and oiling, and that's a good maintenance thing to do with your machine um, every once in a while. You don't have to do it, you know, once a month or anything, um, and if you don't do a lot of sewing every, you know, couple of years, it's probably fine, but you should do it occasionally. threads off again as we go. We don't I don't like all these big hanging honking threads. So you want to get two with the stay stitching facing this way and two with the stay stitching facing that way because this is going to be the open part on the inside of the journal cover. And where you place the label doesn't matter if it's front or back. Just make sure that it's in there somewhere. What I do did just notice is I put this one with the label on it on this back piece, and here it's on the front piece. Usually I like it on the front. It doesn't matter as long as I don't put both of these on the same cover. So we don't want to do that. <laughs> that would be bad. All right, so I'm gonna do this one. But you know these are handmade and unique, and no two are exactly the same. So. 
That's what we tell ourselves, how we can um, <laughs> justify them not being perfect. You wouldn't know it, but I am a closet perfectionist. And some things do make me crazy, but I'm not going to rip that out. again. Now on this one I noticed as I was sewing it that the, the fabric's hanging over a little bit here on the inside edge so I'm going to trim it. Easier to trim it now than it will be after the um, notebook cover is already assembled. So now it's all more even. Okay. So now we'll do the other other side. I don't know that I would advocate doing these out of stretch denim. I think that might make your job hard um, because of the stretchy nature of the fabric. I think I would stick to regular denim. Uh, baby blue jeans are really fun to do things like this with, if only for taking the little pockets and things off of them um, and then using adult blue jeans for the rest because baby blue jeans always have fun um, like embroidery and things on them. So they're really cool. This one's going to be tricky because this one's got this other pocket on it, so I've got to be careful. And I can't do too much trimming. So let's see what happens. So that's what I mean about going slow. When you get to the thick parts. This one had the same trouble on the inside where it's a little bit that one fabric's bigger than the other. Now I could probably leave it, um, but it's on the outside. Uh, um, do I want to leave it? Maybe I do want to leave it. No, I don't think I do. I'm going to trim it. Oops. Or at least even it up. There we go. All right, so now before we do all of our assembly, the other thing I want to do is I want to attach these big pockets, at least part of them, to the outer fabric. So again, I want to have right sides together. I do think I'm going to end up cutting part of the pocket off, but I think this will be cool if I can manage this and get everything sewn together. We'll see if it ends up being too much denim. All right. So I'm going to just, I'm not going to pin anything, I'm just going to lay it on here. Because, you know, why would I pin anything? It's really... <laughs> Now when you get it sewn on there, you're going to be left with something that looks like this. I'm going to trim this off.
and then we're going to have this. And when the journal is made and sewn together, there'll be a pot. There'll be this will be sewn down, and there'll be a pocket here. So that I think will be cool. Now you could save this, and it could be a tall, thin pencil pocket. I'm not going to because it would be kind of really skinny. Um, and I've got you know we always seem to have lots of blue jeans around here. All right, I'm going to do one more because I've got one more pocket. <clears throat> okay. Kind of center it and line it up. I don't want it to go too far towards the center because like I said before, then you aren't going to be able to get the the eyelets in. Now you could do um, a fabric collage on here before you do the assembly this is when you want to do it. You could sew bits of lace, you could sew um, appliques, uh, little pieces of old handkerchiefs, some little bits of crochet, um, doilies, anything really. Do it before you do the assembly. And you know if you have a large stash of stuff like we all do. Um, go through your stash and pick out some things. All right. So now we're going to trim this one like we did the other one. And get rid of the extra pocket parts. See? Okay. Ah, so now we've got all our pieces together. All righty. Okay, so these are my two back pieces and they have nothing on them. And then I've got my two front pieces with our partial pockets on them and then I've got my inside flaps. Alright, so this is how we're going to start this. We're going to start with the outside face down. We're going to grab a piece of stiffener. then an inside piece face up, inside front flap, inside back flap, so that your stay stitching seams are facing each other towards the center of what's going to be your notebook cover. Then I'm going to just put some pins in the corners to keep all the layers together. Whoops, ow, ouch jab to myself. To keep all the layers together and sort of lined up. I really need to get a pin cushion. It's not like I don't have some around here somewhere. But I put them away. I don't know where the away place is. That's not good on. I could only find the, the jar. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to try to line up the corners as much as I can. Now this is the piece um, with a small pocket on it. So when we sew this one, normally I would sew from the front side, um, but I'm going to sew from the, in, the um, inside so that I can make sure I don't hit these metal rivets on this pocket. Okay, so now I've got all my layers pinned together. So let's do the other one. I need another piece of stiffener. Inside front flap, inside back flap, and P. 
pin. So I'm lining up the corners of the denim and I'm just making sure that I've got some of the stiffener underneath where I'm going to sew. My stiffener seems to be cut a little wonky, so I cut it the other day and I'm, I don't know, it was the day of the full moon. I have no excuse, <laughs> except that it was a full moon. All right. Now, like with the denim apron, if you really want this to fray a lot, uh, and I'm assuming that you're using an old worn pair of jeans for this, then like with the denim apron video, and for a better explanation, go watch the video, um, make slits in your, in your seams to the stitching, like every half of an inch, and then wash it. And when you do that, it's gonna ravel a whole bunch. All right, so now we've got our two covers, and they're all pinned together. Woohoo! Put this over here. All right, we're gonna sew these together in just a minute. I'm gonna go run for a cough drop. I'll be right back. <laughs> 